there, I'm Ashley from Ashley & Music Studio and today I'm going to tell you why you should memorize your piano music. And I'm going to take you through the different kinds of memory that are at play when you're learning how to play the piano and why they are really important and essential to understand as a part of the learning process. So just for starters, I like to point out that memorizing piano music for performances wasn't always the standard or the norm. Before the 1800s, people didn't memorize their piano music when they would give concerts. They would play from music. However, in the 1800s, we saw the rise of the virtuoso musician, meaning the musician that could get on stage and kind of knock everybody's socks off and really do things that were quite impressive. And during this time, a famous composer named Franz Liszt started memorizing his piano music to play for his piano concerts, probably just to show off. He was kind of considered one of the first rock stars. People would swoon when they heard him play the piano. Women would throw their underwear up on stage, things like that. And he started playing from memory. And at the, around the same time, Clara Schumann, who's an incredibly impressive figure in music history, was also concertizing and premiering a lot of her husband Robert Schumann's works. She actually toured and gave concerts to support her nine children while she composed and was an all-around badass. And she liked to memorize her music because she thought that it gave her more freedom with her musical expression and musicality at the piano, which is one of the reasons that people often cite today as why we should memorize our music. Now, I definitely think that there is value in memorizing music. But I will say that I'm going to contradict the title of this video just a little bit because I don't always make my students memorize their music and I don't always memorize my music. Sometimes it's not realistic. Sometimes I'm under too strict of a time deadline and it's not possible. Sometimes I'm playing with a group of people and it's not super realistic for me to memorize all of my part in the context of the group. And sometimes for students, it's the idea of memorizing is so paralyzing that they can't get beyond the memory aspect and it prohibits them from being able to do something that they would otherwise be able to do. So I think that there's a lot of room to be flexible with memorization because ultimately I don't think that memorization always needs to be our goal when we're learning how to play a piece of music. Now, it is important to note that throughout the entire learning process, from the very first time that we put our fingers on the piano to start to play a piece of music, we are committing things to memory in various ways. So it doesn't really matter if our ultimate goal is to memorize a piece or not. We will be subconsciously memorizing along the way without even thinking about it. And this is actually one of the biggest struggles that I see with memory. Because people subconsciously memorize as they play through a piece over and over again and as they practice the piece, oftentimes they'll get to a performance and they'll say, oh, I have the piece memorized. But this kind of memory that develops is mostly our muscle memory. So I'm going to take you through the four different kinds of memory and how they're at play when we're learning a piece and when we're performing a piece. Because if you understand them, it can help you structure your practice to be so much more efficient and effective. So muscle memory is the first kind of memory to develop. And it's what I was just describing. It's the kind of memory that develops somewhat subconsciously, we start to remember how it feels to play something. And And so if you've ever practiced something to the point that you took away the music and you could play it and you were kind of surprised that you could play it without the music, that's muscle memory. Muscle memory is wonderful because it develops somewhat without us really focusing on it. And it's also obviously very important for playing an instrument like the piano where we need to know how things feel underneath our hands. The downside of muscle memory is that it's not super reliable. Muscle memory is also what's at play if you've ever been performing a piece or playing through a piece and you have something go wrong and you can't find your way back. You can't get through that mistake and you have to go all the way back to the beginning of the piece and start over again. That means that you have a piece in your muscle memory. And that's the downside of muscle memory is it's not super consistent. And if we hit a roadblock, we oftentimes aren't able to make it through the roadblock. We also have our visual memory. And visual memory is what things look like on the piano in relation to where our hands are and also what things look like on the page. And visual memory is really important because it's great to be able to see what you're doing. And also with our visual memory, we can start to get a sense of how things are organized on the page. And when we close our eyes or when we're trying to memorize something, we can bring that score back into our visual memory to see where things were in the score and to maybe recall different notes that we had written in the score or things we had highlighted and things like that. It's also really important because visually we need to know how things look on the keyboard in relation to our hands so that we know where we need to be. Now we also have our RL memory, which is our ear memory, which is how things sound. And obviously that's very important because when we play 
a piece of music. We are creating something from nothing. I've mentioned that in a couple of my videos. And when we create something from nothing, we have to have a pretty good idea of how it sounds or we're not gonna be able to replicate that sound. Reproducing what we hear is such an innate human ability. It's how we all learn how to speak our languages. And so listening to music and listening to the pieces that we're working on can be really helpful because it helps us to develop that oral memory or a sense of what things sound like and then we can better reproduce that. Now the last form of memory is cognitive memory. And this is by far the most challenging kind of memory to achieve with a piece, but it's also the most solid. So cognitive memory is essentially when you use whatever your basis of music theory knowledge is to analyze a piece. And it's okay if you don't have a knowledge of music theory. It's analyzing the patterns and the structure and really digging into the music to see and to learn what's going on and knowing that very deeply. I always say you've achieved cognitive memory if I handed you a piece of manuscript paper and you could write out your piece of music and you had all of the correct notes, all of the correct rhythm values, all of the correct symbols, all of that. That is when you know you really have cognitive memory. And that is our ultimate goal. We really want to have cognitive memory because that gives us the most solid chance of being able to play something over and over again without having memory lapses and with as few mistakes as possible. Now, I just explained the four kinds of memory and I put them all in their own category. And while they are separate things, they are all obviously also very related and interconnected. So cognitive memory is not separate from all the other kinds of memory. It's really a culmination of those three kinds of memory plus this deep understanding and analysis of the piece. And all of these kinds of memory work together to help form and shape our ideas about what music is. Now there are tons of different things that you can do to strengthen each of these types of memory. And what's really great about it is like I mentioned earlier, even if you're not trying to memorize your piece, like that's not your ultimate end goal, you can still do a lot of those exercises to strengthen the various kinds of memory because it's gonna make you a better player and a better musician. Even if you don't end up fully memorizing your piece, you'll feel more comfortable and more confident and you'll know it better. Now I have a whole video about how to memorize piano music and you can check that out right here. And I give a ton of suggestions in that video of how to practice each of these kinds of memory. Okay, so to finally answer the question of why you should memorize your piano music, it gives you freedom in expression and musicality because if you really know something on a very deep level, you're gonna be able to connect to it on a deeper level. But having said that, you don't have to memorize a piece in order to play it well. Now the last thing that I'm gonna leave you with is one other just kind of idea and thought on memory. Memory is fickle, it's not super reliable. And when we memorize pieces on the piano or throughout the whole entire learning process, we don't necessarily achieve memorization of a piece and get to the point where it's like solidified in an ice cap forever in our memory. That's, that's unfortunately not how it works. Oftentimes we will memorize something and then somewhere along the line mistakes will creep in or we'll notice we were doing something wrong or we'll forget certain sections and that's okay. That's just kind of how our brains work and how memory works. So once you start to work on memorizing pieces, if you find that you are forgetting things or memorizing things and then forgetting things, that happens. Memory is something we pretty consistently have to work on in order to be able to maintain it. So you might get to a point where you can remember parts of your pieces, you know, years down the road after you've memorized them. It also is normal to forget pieces if you don't play them in a while. And it's also really normal for our memory to fill in the gaps if we do forget something. And so that's why it's important when you are practicing this art of memorizing that you also make sure to check in with your music. So once you start memorizing, even if you get to a point that you think you have it fully memorized, don't just, you know, put your music away on the bookshelf and never look at it again. Make sure that regularly, I would say daily, as a part of your practice, you're also playing from your music to reinforce what's on the score so that your brain doesn't do that fun thing where it fills in the gaps and you start making stuff up. Good luck with your memorizing. I hope you found this video helpful. If so, go ahead and give it a thumbs up so, so that other people can benefit from it as well. And I'll see you next time.